in the driver's seat as Westbrook is looking at an attention sphere right now. He also has a Kiora in the grip. And he just added a copy of Simic Charm to his hand. Not the right party for Simic Charm right now. Maybe not. Maybe not. Simic Charm is super good. I mean, if you had to make a list of like the cards from Ravnica Block that are powerful and saw essentially zero play, yeah. I think Simic Charm makes near the top of my list. I just love, I always love like that list of cards that's like, why isn't this card seeing play? This card is completely awesome. It's just like, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Fundamentally, Evolve strategies are really hard to play in the face of Supreme Verdict, and it's hard to play blue-green decks when you can't play with the Evolve cards. Yeah. That's my analysis. D-Sphere going to come in. Going to take care of the Elspeth. Now here's a Kiora. That's going to come in. We'll see exactly what that's targeting here. It looks like it's going to target Aetheling, so no damage dealt for that one. A Kiora, not very good against Elspeth. And Adrian says, all right, I'm going to bounce this at the end of your second main phase before you pass the turn. And the reason he's doing this is because Kiora targets Elspeth, but now that, excuse me, Kiora targets Aetherling, but because it's come out of play and come back into play, it can still deal damage. Correct. Because it's a different Aetherling, even though it's the same one. Some rules chicanery. This is the Jace. That'll turn over another Jace, a Debtor's Pulpit, and a Plains. Now, you have Adrian's deck list in front of you. Anything new going on here? Because we have seen a lot of this stuff before. The Pulpit, the Azorius Key Rune, all of that stuff. So the big changes to his list he now has a main deck copy of Render Silent that used to be only in his sideboard. Okay. And he has a copy of Banishing Light now in the main deck alongside his four copies of Detention Sphere. And other than that, it's hard for me to say for certain if any of these are new cards. I'm not that familiar with his full 75. Does he still have the Disperse? Does he still have the Disperse? Don't tell me no. He still has the Disperse. Yes. Yes. All right. Even though that does not interact with Banishing Light the way that it does with Detention That's Sphere. That's correct. That's correct. Still a good bounce spell. And he does have a Dia side in his main deck. I yes. did just catch that actually. Yes, he does have a he does have a Dia side in his main deck. That's a card I am very, very fond of. It's I think that card is going to be very good. I wouldn't be surprised to see multiple copies of that card in people's main decks moving forward. No real artifacts to kill. It being an instant obviously makes it better than Revoke Existence. This is a copy of Miscutter Hydra. This looks like to be a lot. Sullivan sitting at 12. However, it's going to come into play tap because of blind obedience. So not the biggest of problems right now for Adrian. Looks like Kiora is going to tick on up here. Adrian going to do the same thing. He's going to untap. He's going to take a draw here. Definitely in the driver's seat, even after the debtor. I mean, he's got plenty of ways to deal with the miscutter Hydra as well. It has debtor pulpit, debtor's pulpit, excuse me, in his hand, soldier tokens, all that good stuff. Looks like he's going to deploy the pulpit on a planes. So he's uh, he's good to go. Another extort trigger too. Yep. What you see here is a blue white blue white control player trying to close up a game to have enough time to finish up the third one. Yeah, he's playing as fast as he reasonably can here. Kiora going to bite the dust. Some damage going to get dealt. All that good stuff here. Not sure if Adrian's used his Jace yet this turn. Looks like he's going to use it now and tick it on up before passing the turn back. You see, he's just trying to get it over with. Rustbrook draws his card for the turn. It's got to be a Boon Sader to go along with the Sylvan Karrington. His deck list is a little bit different. Not, you know, Bant Midrange, there's a wide swath of cards that could be in a Bant Midrange deck. So for those of you guys wondering at home exactly what's going on here, um, there is a copy of Polokranos. There's three Miscutter Hydras in the main deck. Three Boon Saders, two Scavenging Goose, four Sylvan Karrington, four Loxodon Smiter, four Fleece Main Lions, three Corsair of Crufix, three copies of Simic Charm, three Detention Sphere, two copies of Avenue of the Worm, two Ajani Mentor of Heroes, and then two Cure of the Crashing Wave. So this deck is just really just a good stuff deck. Yes. That's all that it is. And then the lands, you've got 12 Temples, a couple of dual lands, all of that stuff. And then as we're going to take a look at the sideboard here, as Brian's going to be on the play for game number three, and you can see he's actually going back to the well right now. You've got an additional Detention Sphere, four copies of Supreme Verdict, three Prophet of Crufix, an additional copy of Polychronos, two Spirit of Labyrinth, three Revoke Existence, and then one Simic Charm. So, just good cards. Just a That's bunch of good cards. typically what Bant is. Yeah, and uh, Johnny, uh, Mentor of Heroes is the ultimate good cards enabler. Right? Yeah. It's finds gas, finds some of your high impact cards when you're looking for them, and if you have a developed board, you can move the plus one, plus one counters on your creatures, and that, that's quite good there, too. Now, we'll take a look at Adrian's sideboard. I know you've got it in front of you, and there are a bevy of one-ofs. 
Three copies of Gainsay, a Negate, a Dispel, a Celestial Flare, two Last Breaths, a Glare of Heresy, a Deicide, an Opportunity, a Chase Memory Adept, a Debtor's Pulpit, a Blind Obedience, and a Ratchet Bomb. We already saw the Blind Obedience and the Debtor's Pulpit come in. Uh, clearly a concession to Mist Cutter Hydra. And it wouldn't surprise me if we saw the Celestial Flare in here as well as another answer to the Mist Cutter Hydra and potentially Fleece Main Line as well. Yeah, nothing. Uh, not, I mean, nothing crazy here. If you're familiar with Adrian's work and him playing this deck, this is just run-of-the-mill stuff for him. Again, you know, I would be interested to sit down and sit and talk with him just about how he came to the one ofs and all of the decisions that he's made for this particular weekend. That's all. Just because there's like a lot of new cards that he has to actually weigh in his decision-making process, especially when you're a deck that has a lot of one ofs and sees a decent amount of cards over the course of the game. I would imagine a lot of it is just kind of guesswork and hedging. Sure. You know, you you play some cards because you know that they're going to be reasonably good in a lot of spots and potentially have huge upside uh, in certain spots as well. The Cyclonic Rift is a really good example of that. Mm -hmm. It's hard for that card to be way too bad because two mana bounce of perma an online permanent is something that it is nice to have access to in your deck. And when the game drags out, it, it can be very powerful in those spots as well. So a lot of the decisions are like that. Play stuff that's good almost all the time and very powerful some of the time. Westbrook will be on the play here for game number three against Sullivan. Bant Midrange versus Blue Eye Control is our second match here in round number four from Cincinnati. You see Sullivan has at least one revelation in his hand. The question is, does he have enough lands? He's kept, so the answer looks like it's going to be yes. He's going to start off with a Temple of Deceit in the face of a Temple of Mystery. Top card's going to go to the bottom as it does send it back over to Westbrook, who does have a Sylvan Carrington in his hand. He's going to take two from that Hollow Fountain, go down to 18, and then likely drop the Accelerant. So a pretty good start for him. Although something carried it is fraught with some peril against Supreme Verdict Control decks. Mm -hmm. You need it to make mana, but then you're, as you play that and then develop your board further, you're running more and more into the jaws of Supreme Verdict. Another Temple from Sullivan, but Westbrook has a Courser here, and that's a Temple of Plenty off the top of his deck, so that's going to come into play. He's going to gain a life and go up to 19. Top card is a pool of Kronos. That'll be the card he has to decide about on the scry, and it looks like he's going to keep that. So this is an island for Sullivan before passing the turn back. No white mana yet here, Patrick. Yeah, that's really important. It means that he can't Supreme Verdict on turn four. And probably even further, because if he had any white mana, he would probably play it to give himself the hope of drawing white mana the following turn to Supreme Verdict. Absolutely. So. Now, he is staring a Dissolve in the face. First, he's going to start by taking two Will Sullivan from that course. He's going to go down to 18. You have to imagine whatever his cast is going to get Dissolved. And that's exactly what's going to happen to Pula Kronos. So Sullivan going to take a look at the top card. He's going to put that card to the bottom. Clearly digging for white mana. Looks like he's found one here in Hollowed Fountain. That is step one of many. Now, he does have a D-Sphere in his hand right now. He's going to take two, going to go down to 16. Curious if he's going to Detention Sphere this Courser or not. And the answer is yes. With Brian missing land drops, it's, it's pretty bad to let him look at a land next turn off the top of the deck. Sylvan Carey to the draw here for Westbrook. He's going to play an additional Courser. Take a look at the top card. It's a Fleece Main Lion. before passing the turn back over to Sullivan, who will draw a card and see if he can find mana. This is revelation for one. It's not exciting, but you see what he's going for. I was surprised that Brian didn't take that opportunity to land Kiora last turn. I was a little surprised too, actually. Uh, maybe, maybe the thought process is that I just need lands very badly here, as he does find one off the top of his deck with the Hollowed Fountain from the Courser. Temple of Mystery will be the next card he does find, so. See if he takes the opportunity to land the Courser now. Or excuse me, land the Kiora now. Going to start by attacking for two. That's the easy part. You do run a risk by adding any more creatures to your board at this point of Supreme Verge just getting better and better. He's going to play Sylvan Carrot to just pass the turn back over to Sullivan. He'll take a draw. He does draw Supreme Verdict. He just does not have the white mana to cast it. He's going to rev for one again, draw a card. I think there may have been a third copy of Supreme Verdict. Yeah, it is. And he just has to pass the turn back again over to Westbrook. Who's going to untap? He'll take a draw. It's a Temple of Mystery. Look at the top card. It's a Temple of Enlightenment. So he's going to put that one into play. He's going to gain a life. Take a look at the top card here for the Scry in just a moment, as long as he does remember. I don't think he has much of a choice in that regard. We will need that top card of his deck turned over, so we will make sure that that does happen. Right. Brian's, a, Brian's playing into a spot here where... It's going to be incredible if Adrian's able to find a, the, white, the second white man to cast Supreme Verdict. Yes. He's going to pass the turn back. 
Sullivan, can you find a white source of mana that comes into play untapped? It's rather important. It's an island. So the answer is no. And now Adrian's, of course, in a lot of trouble. And this is a banishing light, so that's definitely a step in the right direction. That'll take care of that. And also, the, the thing here for Adrian is that he actually knows, like, you know, what's coming for the most part because of the courser. So, you know, Temple of Plenty in the hand. Okay, sure. Revoke Existence. Doesn't actually really matter all that much as you've Revoke Existence, the Banishing Light. The Hydra comes back as a 0 0. So he's okay in that regard. See a Boon Seder here. There is a Detention Sphere on the Courser, so that's something at yeah, least. Yeah, that's but, true. You know, Courser is pretty low impact here in the scheme of things as well. Attack here for two. Looks like a Boon Seder maybe coming in. Yep, that's what's going to happen. So it's going to be an attack for a total of six. And he's going to negate that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because I believe it is still a, it says a non-creature spell. Yeah, so I don't think that should work. And we're going to check with our table spotter here really quickly. So, yeah, we're finding out momentarily here. This is one of those things where, yeah. Right, it's just a, it is just an aura when it is on the stack. Okay. Uh, as a bestow card. Got it. Sullivan draws his card. It's a copy of Sphinx's Revelation. So you cannot remove Solit when it is being bestowed. Gotcha. Because even though it's creature on the type line, it's just an aura on the stack. I'm just glad it's not confusing. There's a ref for two. It is. <laughs> Members of R&D passionately arguing that bestow is not complicated is really <laughs> funny to me. I, if you want to argue that it's cool enough that it's worth the complexity, that's fine. That's an argument you, that I'm willing to have. Arguing that that thing is not complicated is, wow. Tempo of Plenty going to come off the top here, going to show a lock on Smiter. Fleece Main Lion, the ability to go monstrous, is certainly available here for Westbrook if he wants to take advantage of it. This is an attack for five. We'll make it six. Now Verdict is really no good anymore. What does and Sullivan then, do to get himself out of this? And this is, Brian's doing the same thing that he was trying to do last turn with the Boon Seder. It's just play the game into a place where Supreme Verdict does not catch Adrian up mm -hmm. uh, and, and Fleece Me Malign accomplishes just that. 